Hello and welcome to the second part of our lecture on searching strategies. So today we are going to talk about detailed examples of searches and then we're going to see the different types of searches that are available for us. Let's look at a vacuum world for example. We could have a specific location with a vacuum cleaner and the aim is to make sure that that place is clean. So we could have my own world made up of two different locations we have location a and location b and then we could have dirt or no dirt in either locations now we are going to have an agent an intelligent vacuum cleaner agent that is going to perceive the environment that it is in and so it will know its location and it is going to be able to tell the condition of the location we are going to have two two variables in our perception that is going to be the location location and then the state of that particular location. Possible actions to move for a vacuum cleaner will be moving left, moving right, sucking up dead, or doing no operation. And by our well that we have we, we are looking at, it's going to be location A and location B. And the goal is to have both locations being clean. So if we decide to create the total state space, remember we already said that a state space is made up of all possible states of that particular problem. And so for this vacuum cleaner well that we are looking at, we are going to have a total of eight states in the state space, which is what I have depicted. Right, if we start from location five, meaning that our vacuum cleaner is in location A and there is dirt in location B. Our solution is going to be that when we are in location A, because we know it is clean, we will move right into location B, meaning that the states that we are going to be in will be state six. And then once there is dirt, we will suck up the dirt, which takes us to state eight. So if we are in state five, in location A being clean, location B being dirty, we will move to state 6 where location A remains clean and the vacuum cleaner is now positioned in location B. And then we suck up the dirt which takes us to the goal state which is state 8. Let's assume that we have the initial state being 2. Our vacuum cleaner is in location B and it is dirty. When we go to location A, it is also dirty. Our, our solution is going to take us from state 2 to state 4 because when we are in location B, we will know that there is debt in location B and we will suck up that debt, meaning location B now becomes clean, which is state 4. Then we will need to move left, which takes us to state 3. Now in the left location, A is dirty, so we will suck up the debt in A, which takes us to the state 7. So our solution is going to be to state 2, to state 4, to state 3, and then to state 7, which is a goal state. If we are going to have a, a state space graph, it is going to be as I've shown. If we are up in the first one, it means that we can move to the as the arrows show I mean you can go through the graph and see try to make sense out of it but that is basically how the total graph for the total state space is going to be like right if we have the we look at the state space graph we are going to have attributes our attributes will include the possible state of any location which is going to be either dirty or clean and then the possible actions will be move left, move right, suck up, or do nothing. Then we are going to have our goal test, which is going to be no debt. We aim to have a place that has no debt. And our path cost, we could assume, is going to be one Ghana CD per action, and then zero Ghana CD for no work done, which is no operation. Let's take another example, the eight puzzle. We have tiles that have been numbered. And the aim is to shift around these numbers such that they are arranged in a particular order. So then, when we come back to our eight puzzle, we are going to have a three by three grid with eight numbered tiles. And any tile that is adjacent to a blank grid can be moved, 
can be moved. In formulating the search, our possible states are going to be all the possibilities of the location of tiles, and then our possible actions are going to be moving the blanks. Remember, every tile that is adjacent to a blank grid can be moved. So we are, in a sense, moving the blank. So we can move the blank left, right, we can move it up, or we can move it down. In so doing, we shift some of the tiles around. Our goal test is going to be the goal state. Depending on what we want to do with the numbers, we can decide to arrange them in any particular order. And that goal test will be the specific order for which we have chosen. Again, we can assume that our path cost is going to be one Ghana CD per move. Depending on the number of moves we make, we can calculate the total cost of carrying out that search. Now let's look at search strategies. The key concept of search strategies is to find a solution with as little cost as possible. Remember we have said that, uh, we said in our class last week that we are going to have a tree. If we have a tree as a solution, it means we have nodes that we are going to expand. So that is the, that is the background that we are working on. If we are going to be expanding nodes, we are going to make use of memory, which is going to cost us. So the key aim here is to find a solution with as little cost as possible and cost in terms of memory usage and in terms of time used. The idea is to pick a node and to expand the node using a function to see what else we can do. And so in, in, in so doing, we are going to have different states being generated. Now, to get a particular strategy that we are using, the strategy or the type of strategy is determined by the way we expand the various nodes. So we could go linearly down, we could go breadthwise, we could do many different combinations. The way we expand a node will determine the kind of strategy that we have chosen to use. Now, when you talk about searching and nodes, we are going to talk about different data structures which we need during, we will need to make use of them and the information that they carry during our various search. This includes the current state of a node. So if we are in any particular node, that becomes our current state. It is neither initial nor goal, depending on how you look at it. It is just the current state. And that current state will have other kinds of information. For example, the current node is going to tell us what the parent node is. So where we are, we will know where we came from, from where we are. That will be the parent node. Where we came from will be the parent node. And how we got to where we are from the parent node is going to be determined by the operator that was applied on the parent node to generate the current node that we are at. Then we have the depth of the node. The depth of the node is calculated from the root of the whole tree. And then the path cost is also calculated from the root of the whole tree. The cost, remember every move has a cost. So we will just do the accumulated cost of moving from the node tree and trace our path right down to the current node where we are at. Evaluating search strategies. The first evaluation is completeness. Remember we've already said that. If we find a solution, we need to be able to convince ourselves that that is the best solution we could find under the circumstances. And so the first one is completeness. And then we, in, in, the, in the way of completeness, we try to ask ourselves, if there is a solution, are we by all means going to find it? If there is a solution, will we by all means find it? No matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter the operations that we apply, if there is a solution, are we going to by all means find that solution? Another evaluation index is the time complexity. How much time have we used to expand all expandable nodes? It means that if there is a node that can lead us somewhere else, we need to expand it. We need to find out where that somewhere else is. So if we are able to do that for all the nodes within the graph, how much time will we use in that? 
Then we have the space complexity. How much storage are we going to use in expanding all expandable nodes? How much storage are we going to use to store all the nodes that we have expanded in order to find a solution for that particular strategy? Then we have optimality. If there are so many solutions for that particular problem, are we going to ensure that we have found the best solution first? If there are so many solutions remember the example i gave about traveling from kumasi to accra there are so many solutions i don't need to sit on a bus to find out how much it is going to be how long it will take me um, in terms of comfort and all that i don't need to do that but if there is an optimal solution maybe if i take a plane that is the the, the optimal that is the best i could do if there are so many things am i saying that um, for this particular strategy, the best solution was the first one that I arrived at. That is going to be the optimality test. If you have any questions, again, you can drop me an email or you can send me a WhatsApp or give me a call and I will be happy to answer your questions for you. Watch out for part three of this tutorial.